nature can be truly incredible. Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. I'm your host Emily and today we're counting down our list of the top 10 unbelievable natural phenomena caught on camera. Coming in at number 10 is the blue waterfall. In the Demurco Dry Valley in Antarctica, a bright crimson five-story waterfall pours out of Taylor Glacier into Lake Bonnie. Now it looks like a gush of from a wound in the ice, but scientists have recently discovered the cause behind this mysterious phenomenon. The water that feeds Blood Falls was once a salty lake that is now cut off from the atmosphere due to the formation of glaciers on top of the lake. The water is preserved 400 meters underground and has become even saltier over time. It is now three times saltier than seawater and cannot freeze. Salt water is also extremely rich in iron and completely devoid of oxygen and sunlight. As the iron-rich water seeps through the fissure into the glacier and comes into contact with the air, the iron oxidizes and rusts, staining the water a dark red color. Now this is just absolutely crazy, but I'm glad scientists were able to find out the reason for this. Number 9. Crooked Forest the Crooked Forest is a grove of oddly shaped pine trees located in northwestern Poland that is a protected natural monument. This grove of 400 pines was planted in around 1930. Each pine tree bends sharply to the north, just above ground level. Now, it's not all the trees in the forest that do this, as the curved pines are enclosed by a surrounding forest of straight pine trees. It's generally believed that some form of human tool or technique was used to make these grow or bend this way, but the method has never been determined determined and remains a mystery to this day. It has been speculated that the trees may have been deformed to create naturally curved timber for use in furniture or boat building, while others believe that a snowstorm could have bent the trunks, but there is little evidence of that. Good news is the site is open to the public and serves as a notable tourist attraction in the region, so if you want to check out these weird trees, you can. Number 8. Fire Whirls Fire whirls are also known as fire tornadoes and are absolutely t A fire whirl is a whirlwind induced by a fire and often, at least partially, composed of flame or ash. These start with a whirl of wind, often made visible by smoke, and may occur when intense rising heat and turbulent wind conditions combine to form whirling eddies of air. These eddies can contract a tornado-like vortex that sucks in debris and combustible gases. The phenomenon was first verified in the 2003 Canberra Bush fires and has since been verified in the 2018 car fire in California. Fire whirls become frequent when a wildfire or especially fire storm creates its own wind, which can spawn large vortices. They're usually 10 to 50 meters, 33 to 164 feet tall, and a few meters several feet wide, and only last a few minutes. Some, however, can be more than one kilometer, 0.6 miles tall, contain wind speeds of over 200 kilometers per hour, or 100 120 miles per hour and persist for more than 20 minutes. However, fire tornadoes have been reported to grow as wide as 1,000 feet. Now, a fire whirl can reach up to 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit or 1,090 degrees Celsius. Yeah, that is hot. Now, these sound absolutely terrifying, and I mean, tornadoes themselves are terrifying, but a fire tornado? That's a big nope from me. Number seven, ringing rocks. Ringing rocks are rocks that resonate like a bell when struck. An example of this is in the stones in Ringing Rocks Park in Pennsylvania. Several early scientists became interested in the ringing rocks, however, none were able to formulate a credible theory on the ringing ability of these rocks or the formation of the boulder fields. Edgar T. Wary, a mineralogist and bonatist, became interested in the ringing rocks, where he theorized that the ringing was due to the texture of the diabase rocks and that they were supported by other rocks. In 1965, geologist Richard Faz of Lafette College took a few of the rocks back to his lab for testing. He found out that when the rocks were struck, they created a series of tones at frequencies lower than the human ear could hear. An audible sound was only produced because these tones interact with each other. Although Faz's experiments explained the nature of the tones, they did not identify the specific physical mechanism in the rock which made them. Now, there's been a great deal of controversy concerning the ringing ability of the boulders, and there has been an almost complete lack of testing to support the conjectures. Conditions such as size and shape of the boulder and the way that the boulders are supported or stacked certainly influence the sounds that the boulder make, but do not in themselves impact the ringing ability. Number 6. Lake Hillier 
Lake Hillier is a saline lake on the edge of Middle Island, the largest of the islands and islets that make up the Recherche Alpeggio in the Goldfields Esperance region off the south coast of Western Australia. Now, I'm going to state the obvious. It is particularly notable for its pink color. Lake Hillier is about 2,000 feet in length by about 820 feet in width, and the most notable feature of the lake is its pink, vibrant color. Now, the vibrant color is permanent and does not alter when the water is taken into a container, which I think is pretty Pretty cool. Now, the pink color is believed to be due to the presence of the organism Dunalinia salina. I hope I said that right. Probably not, though. Now, the lake itself is safe to swim in, too. However, it is not advisable nor allowed without previous approval by the Western Australia Department of Environment Conservation. Now, since 2002, the lake itself has been considered to be a wetland of sub regional significance. Number five, the hum. A constant low frequency sound has been plaguing people around the world since at least the 1960s, from Canada to New Mexico, Scotland to New Zealand. Most who hear it say it sounds like a truck engine idling and earplugs don't help block it out. Called the hum, it is so well documented that there's statistics about it. It can only be heard about 2% of the population. It is generally present indoors and becomes louder at night. It is heard more often in rural and suburban areas and it tends to be heard by middle-aged people. Now, some doubt the hum is even a physical sound, as in the fraction of cases it may be the result of psychology, with people focusing too hard on ambient noise. But for the most part, the hum appears to be very real. Many obvious sources have been ruled out, such as highway noises, industrial equipment, the electricity grid, and phone towers. Other theories of varying plausibility have been suggested, such as earth tremors, mating fish, power or gas lines, tunneling under the earth, wireless communication devices, and the OG, of course, aliens. Now, a study by geoscientist David Deming of the University of Nebraska suggests that the hum may actually be a result of very low frequency radio transmissions used by military powers. Other research suggests that the hum comes from natural terrestrial or geological phenomena. It is a well studied fact that animals seem to be able to predict earthquakes, so perhaps some humans have the same mechanism. All I know is if I had to hear that all the time, it would drive me crazy. Number four, Milky Sea Phenomenon. For hundreds of years, sailors have reported randomly encountering a strange milky cast to the sea as far as the eye can see, but scientists have been unable to explain it or even know for sure if it was real. Now, in 2006, researchers were actually able to capture a satellite image of a milky sea, and several years later, experiments discovered the glow was likely from bioluminescent bacteria that attract fish in order to be eaten and survive in their guts. It's billions and trillions in these waters. But scientists still aren't sure how or why the bacteria gather in such large numbers as to be able to be seen from space. Like, that is just crazy. Now, in addition, their glow is continuous, unlike the more commonly seen dinoflagellate organisms that produce brief flashes of light. Number three, Cave of Crystals. Cave of Crystals is a cave connected to the Nica mine at a depth of 980 feet in Chihuahua, Mexico. It takes the form of a chamber with its limestone host rock of the mine and is about 358 feet long with a volume of 180,000 to 210 cubic feet. The chamber contains giant selenite crystals, some of the largest natural crystals ever found. Now, as someone who collects crystals, I really want to go there. Now, the largest crystal is 37.4 feet with an estimated mass of 12 tons. Now, when the cave is not flooded, it is extremely hot with air temperatures reaching up to 58 degrees Celsius or 136 degrees Fahrenheit with 90 to 99 percent humidity. Now, this is comparable to the temperature records in Death Valley, but with much wetter air. Air. Now, the cave is relatively unexplored because of these factors. Without proper protection, people can only endure approximately 10 minutes of exposure at a time. Now, the cave was discovered in April 2000 by brothers Juan and Pedro Sanchez while drilling in the mine. When the mine workers found it, it became an instant must-see for both researchers and tourists. Now, as of 2015, the mine had reflooded and the cavern filled once more with the water rich in minerals required for the crystals to grow. Number two, the blue hole. The blue hole is a submarine sinkhole with a maximum depth within the hole of just being over 328 feet. There's a shallow opening to the sea around 20 feet deep, known as the saddle, and an 85 feet long tunnel, known as the arch, whose ceiling is at a depth of 181 feet and whose bottom falls away as about 394 feet. Now, the blue hole is popular for free diving because of the depth directly accessible from shore and the lack of current. But this famous 
dive site is said to have the most diver fatalities in the world. Now, the Blue Hole itself is no more dangerous than any other Red Sea dive site, but diving through the arch, a submerged tunnel, is an extreme dive that has resulted in many accidents and fatalities. The number of Blue Hole fatalities is not accurately recorded, but one source estimates 130 divers died during the 15 year period from 1997 to 2012, averaging over eight per year, and another claims as many as 200. And coming at number one is a moonbow. We've all heard of rainbows, but what about moonbows? A moonbow, sometimes known as a lunar rainbow, is an optical phenomenon caused when the light from the moon is refracted through water droplets in the air. The amount of light available even from the brightest full moon is far less than that produced by the sun, so moonbows are incredibly faint and very rarely seen. Now this isn't a new phenomenon, oh no. Moonbows were first mentioned by Aristotle back in 350 BC, and there are certain parts of the world where you are more likely to see them, such as Hawaii. Just like daytime rainbows, moonbows need the light from the moon to be reflected and refracted by water droplets at certain angles to create a rainbow. Now rather than seeing the full spectrum of colors, moonbows often appear to be white to the human eye. However, the colors are there, and long exposure photographs are a great way of capturing their beauty. Now, the best time to see moonbows is a couple of hours after sunset or before sunrise, and I think it would be so cool to see one in real life. Well, that's all for our list of the top 10 unbelievable natural phenomena caught on camera. Which one do you think is the coolest, and have you ever seen any of these things in real life? Let us know in the comments down below, and don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. I'm your host, Emily, and we'll see you next time. Peace.